Welcome to Armchair Preaching, a podcast of the First Presbyterian Church in Lakeland, Florida. This is a podcast about God's Word, the beauty of the gospel, and what it takes to communicate that truth to others. I'm your host, Pastor Zach McGowan, and on today's episode, Pastor John and I sit down to talk about the final message in our series entitled, An Integrated Life. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Welcome back, everybody, to Armchair Preaching. Back in the armchair with me is Pastor John. Hello, everybody. This uh, gorgeous fall day, man. We're it having is just, nice. We are having Florida fall, and I'm here for it. Is it's, it going to be here all week? Is it, you have Friday nights, costumes, and candies. Yeah, be, it looks, it looks, it looks good. good for that. It looks good. So far, I mean, you never really trust it on a Tuesday when we're recording this, what it's going to be like on right. Friday. Yeah. And it is Florida, so the, the weather forecast typically says something like 20 to 40% rain all the time. Yeah. You know? Yeah, never yeah. that. But it's it's gorgeous today. I need, to start, I need to start working up, get my fire pit ready to go. That's, That's right. It's about that time. Yeah, ours too. That I got to actually clean mine out at home because it, it is that time. It's the time where we go out and we have a white fence, not picket fence, but we have a white fence and sometimes we'll go out and we'll light the fire and we'll act, we have a little projector and we'll oh, actually nice. watch movies watch outside. Movies. Yeah. Nice. So that's it's almost that time. It's almost usually my wife's birthday weekend week, which is coming up in a couple weeks. That's when we really start to get it to it, uh, you know, in earnest. Ernest, oh. right? Uh, we are in the final, final week yeah. in this series called Integrated Life uh, for, for folks that have been with us for the last mm, eight, it nine? Eight, eight, nine, nine, nine weeks. weeks uh, we've been going through this series where we talked about how our faith in Jesus really binds all these areas of our lives, which can sometimes, as you open with, with your illustration, the very first couple of weeks, this idea of where we put these things in boxes and yeah. that's not really how it, it ought to be. Maybe we look at those things in boxes, but that our faith in Jesus Christ is the is all encompassing. For I like how you for, said it this week: it's the foundation upon which everything else yeah, is built. Yeah, that and and you know a lot of different ways you could think about it. You know, I, I, I think we've used. We've Whenever, used them all the same series. We've used it, you know, when you have a nine week series, you definitely are trying to describe it. How can we say the same thing nine different ways? Yeah, yeah but I think it, it diff- you just never know what metaphor is going to hit yeah. with people, right? And yeah. different people. So that's the benefit of a nine week series is you get to unpack a lot of different metaphors. But I wanted to jump off with a, a with something just from a more general preaching, the art of preaching kind of uh, discussion, which I don't think even after 139 or 140 episodes, I don't think we've talked about this. Um, the idea of observable details and what we choose to the decisions we have to make mm-hmm. when we observe details, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll set this up, and then we'll we'll talk about it. You know, you and I uh, tend to do. Uh, you know, we we're we're storytellers in our illustrations, yeah. right? And and then when you're when you're telling a story for an illustration, whether it's a personal story or you're recounting something historically, you right. have to make decisions about what details you're going going yeah. to include and what you don't include. And sometimes it's for for color, it's to draw people into the story, help them kind of imagine what you're describing, what I'm describing. But then there's also the detail of the text, and and we're going to talk. I want to talk a little bit more specifically when we get to the message. But there are different details that the authors we you know we we in our hermeneutics class they talk about you know why are the details there you know when when the when the author slows time down and they give you every kind of step and they yeah. describe the you know almost yeah. down to the smell you know not quite the smells but when they start describing every single moment we can't cover all the details right so we choose which details to to unpack so when yeah, you're the whole the whole the whole uh the the whole um redactive criticism yeah you know yeah. The, the the authors made some made a series of decisions they made and they decisions. had more to choose from but they redacted down to the pieces that we're looking at what why is it this the the emphasis why did matthew emphasize so much about the the fulfillment of the jewish you know messianic expectations and so on yeah uh, so yeah we do that the, the the authors are doing it and we're doing it yeah so one of the things that we have to do as preachers every single week is to dis- to think about details you know yeah. what details do we include in in our illustrations or in the exposition of scripture and what do we not yeah. so as you're approaching a story whether it's an illustration and, and this might be two kind of separate discussions or, or separate um answers because it's different when you're when you're approaching an illustration you're approaching the text what goes through your head in terms of the details that you are going to yeah. include in in that in that moment 
Well, we've, we were all, we're all affected by good storytelling and by good stories. And what makes a good story? You know, it, it, the, the, what, what draws a person in? If I just told you some, some, a few basic facts about the story, that's, that's one thing. And you're going to be, okay, that was yeah, that. That's nice. But when I, when I can give you the color of what the person is thinking, what the, what the, where, where that person was standing, when I can give you uh, details around that, it's, it's the details. That's yeah. the key. It's the details that actually make the stories crackle. Yeah. And so my well, question and is. This, uh, and this week, just as an example, I mean, I don't. I notice this sort of thing because I'm a, I, I may, and I think a lot of people do, but like you, your opening illustration, you talk about a car accident and, yeah. and, but before you get to the accident, you set the scene of you, you just gone to dinner, you went to a pizza place with your kids and then yeah. you walk out screeching to, I mean, you actually, I could, I, I was actually walking out with the us. door yeah. with Were you. Were you holding my daughter's hands with me? Yeah. yeah like, as you you're, feel I'm, that. Yeah. I'm holding, you know, I, I think that to me was. That had nothing to do with the point of what you were going to do and yeah. make, right? Yeah. But it was important for people to say, well, I know what it's like to, to go to a restaurant and right. go and see, you know, something like that. So that, that trying, was what really I think, got me. I think the point of, of, of doing that, when we make those decisions, we're trying to help an audience come and do the exactly what yeah. you just said, come with us. Because yeah. I could have started with, with these words. I saw one day, I saw a fatal car accident. Yeah. And I was the first one on the scene. Me and yeah. two others were first ones on the scene. Yeah. Okay, and, and you could have gotten uh, to the point. I mean, you could have to the to the ultimate, you know, point of the witness. But it doesn't have the same draw you in. Yeah, you know, there's a, there's an emotional tire com- screeching, yeah. glass shattering, metal crunching. That's something. If you've ever heard a car wreck or been in a car wreck, that you, now I'm tapping into memory. Yeah. Well, I think even the emotional component is one of the things details do. They bring along a person emotionally. That's true. So in the in the illustration that you gave at the beginning, like the 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 about face turn of the emotion of that that moment, right? So you're having a nice dinner. You're with your family. You're relaxed, right? You're in this kind of almost jovial. I could kind of feel yeah, that was. scene. Every bit of that is true. And then it's like a smack in the face. And I yeah. think that's part of at least when I do illustrations, I feel the same thing. You kind of want to you, you do this from for 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 a you know. I hate to use these kinds of terms. Well, no, I guess on podcast. What's well, rhetorical effect, right? It's it's yeah. to it's to make the point of how stark yeah. the contrast is between, and then you brought in at the end this idea that you know a, a fatal crash, but not just a fatal crash because that would have been a, a significant. But the detail of that, it was a 19 year old and you're just having a meal with your, your family and your, your daughters and how yeah. you were drawn into this tragedy because you felt this yeah. kinship. Do, do, like yeah, that's, no. that's what I was hearing in the detail. Well, and the, and the other, the there. other detail that really, uh, you know, the, the one I knew I needed to bring in the story was the, the setting. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then what happened? Yeah, but then the the, af- the afterwards with the family in that in that yeah. parlor at the funeral home, where I'm with the family and there's a mother and the father, and I start telling the story, and the father just you know to to see a grown man who just lost his 19 year old daughter drop yeah. to his knees and wail. Yeah, you know that I, I said a little bit more about it in the live services that, but you don't you know that's. That that is something that you do not forget, and yeah. it's and that that is a detail in the story that you do not forget, and it had impact. Yeah, and um and yet that's the setup for what you I was need. there for. Yeah, and then it's the setup in this case for what I wanted to say to tell that whole story to be able to lead into some other. Yeah, you know, like, so it just it just all I felt like it needed it was heavy. Yeah, but it needed to be said there because that was a family who needed to hear something to have you know out of, out of compassion yeah they needed to hear that yeah for what they were going through so yeah yeah so the the the, the details are the details give it color the details give it emotional um um connection and punch yeah. Yeah. um um not the punch is the intention but it just it has it you know if it was a happy story it would have emotional yeah. b- punch as well um and those are the decisions that we have to make right we yes have to, we have to make the decision of what do we feel like is necessary to get into this ultimate point right well you 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 were talking about in your sermons about the opening their minds, and you led into this whole diagnosis thing, which led into you. You had the same decision to yeah. make when it came to uh, the sickness that you and Hannah uh, yeah, experienced. Yeah, which, which and and I tried to be very 
because we know people in the congregation who are dealing with much, much ser- more serious issues. But just that there's that relatability of any mystery is disruptive and it's it's unnerving. And and for those disciples, the point was to make is like when we when when we have the the the, the doubts of our faith that prohibit us from being witnesses. You know, it's the the important part is opening our minds and being willing to confront those things, mm-hmm. right? And the detail walking people through this, like oh this we can't just stay the point that i was you know attempting to make was that we can't stay in our doubts when it comes to our physical health or our you know any any parts of our health we want to get to the bottom of it we want to get to the the point the same thing is true with our spiritual health and and the 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 doubts that we have are the ailments that keep us from doing what god's called us to do to be witnesses and it's it's our our what our faith ought to drive us to do is to go on that journey of exploration and not that we're going to get to a place where we have all of the doubts yeah taken but, care of but you're but this is a this is a great conversation because the the what we're talking about right now is that you and I both made decisions that we were going to allocate real estate like yeah. time yeah to build out a story yeah um and how did you go about how how did you I mean, I've talked about me. Like, yeah. how, how did you go about deciding that I'm going to put, I don't know, would you maybe two minutes or so yeah. into telling the story of your sickness and and making the points that you just made that yeah. it's going to help us? That's how we are with, you know, this diagnosis of having, you know, yeah. health. How did you decide that that's, this is the space to give the detail and the storytelling some time? So, I, you know, I usually do two things um, in a sermon. I, I usually try to lower people's defenses, right? Um, my Good point. My, 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 I, and maybe I'm, maybe it's my cynical nature. I always feel, I, I don't say always, I tend to think people are going to be resistant to hear the message I, I, is or, that, or is accept that, it for their lives. Like actually yeah. they might hear it. They might hear it. And say, I mean, you, you know the thing, right? Heard that before, you know, yeah. it, it, you, you've heard you, good, good message, pastor. You know, yeah, good, yeah, good, yeah, good, yeah, ser- yeah. good sermon preacher, right? And you're like, yeah, don't tell me that. Go live it, right? If that, if you yeah. really believe it, but you know, like people say that tend to say that sort of thing. They're not really intending to go out and do it. They're just like, I, I, I'll. And again, cynical, pessimistic. My side is to say, yeah, you just got spiritual entertainment for the last. 28 minutes or 30 right, minutes right. or whatever i'd rather ra- rather you go out and actually don't tell me just go and yeah. do because it, it's not my message it's the we believe it's the word of god yeah. as much as we can which is why for those listening the one of the best things you can say is that the uh, great great message pastor here's what it made me think yeah. or here's what it made me do and here's what, how i was able to see it lived out you know, you know. well i'll give you an example too because you know we had some folks in in vine this week um and i knew We've got um, Gwen, Gwen Diaz has been running the Oasis program for the last couple of years, and that that reaches children uh, or teenagers. Uh, it's hard to call them children when they're seventeen, eighteen yeah, years right. old, right? But they're in in local high school who are you know housing insecure, right? And they've been uh, working with this group of forty to sixty kids, and you know some of them graduate, whatever. But for the last couple of years, and this uh, set this this set of kids came on Sunday. They've been saying that they're going to come saying they're going to wow. come saying they're going to come nice. and they were there Sunday and uh you know Ed came up to me after and then Gwen actually called me yesterday and and Ed said they were with you the whole time and that was what they needed now their thing was not the witness side necessarily but the experience of Jesus side so I wow. embedded the gospel right there because yes, I did I felt like, you know, there's going to be people in the room who are like, yeah, I'm not going to be a witness because I don't even know Jesus yet. Well, I'm like, okay, well, then your your part in this is you got to know Jesus first. And when you do, it's going to hit you hard, right? Yeah. And Gwen. Wow. Went, that's a great. I see. I would not have known that contextually. Uh, yeah. From, but I didn't know that they were lying. I did not know they were going to be there. Right. Um, but I did know in my preparation, and this was just something that was stirring in me throughout the week. Yeah. And maybe because God, I don't say maybe because God knows. Yeah, I know God yeah, knows what's yeah. going to be there, right? I'm like, can I just tell you that yeah. I, there's just some things. Th- this is just another one of these things that have just lately. There seems to be an, a, a number of things happening that are yeah. that are. We talked about it at a meeting last yeah. night that that you and I could not have orchestrated if we you tried, can't. and yet the Holy Spirit was no. doing some amazing things. I love the idea of lowering the, their defenses to 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 
that we're here pushing something or selling something so that you, you lower the defenses of the, of, of their, their, their willingness to hear something yeah. so that when you do come in with this, have you experienced the, the, the Jesus Christ yet, yeah, the resurrection. that they're ready to, to hear that. And that's, and that's, that's up front. It matters as well. Cause yeah. they're, they're coming in that way. I mean, my, mm-hmm. my professor Haddon Robinson used to say that with regard to in, introductions, yeah. To sermons, he's, he's, his saying was um, talking about the congregation. He said they're 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 a little bit bored and they're suspicious that you're about to make matters worse. Yeah, and and, and you know what? I, when I was when I was listening to your message too, I was thinking, man, we could not have opened. No, in, I know. In, four, in, yeah. in a different, more of a different way. <laughs> that but, was wildly different. But I think you the, had Barbie. I, at the I was talking about the Barbie movie. But the, but and again, I want to tell people who haven't heard the message. I wasn't talking about the content of the Barbie movie. I was talking about the phenomenon of the cultural thing that is whether you like it Barbie or you movement. don't like it. It is a cultural phenomenon. You have to accept that that we live in a world that there's a live action Barbie movie that made over a billion dollars, right? Yeah. But we. We started in wildly different emotional but. places, but the purpose, I felt like, this is why I'm going to talk about the detail thing, because I feel like the purpose was very similar. It was to get, you know, it's to open people up to this thing that you and I both know when we both address this. At the, the funny thing is, at the end of those illustrations, those introductions, we said almost the same thing. Yeah. The idea of Christian witness is really hard for people. It's really difficult for people. We got to this, and that's just what I want to say why we do this podcast because the preaching moment can go a lot of different directions and still achieve very similar purposes yeah. right and i think that's what's so n- neat about fpc lakeland in our preaching uh, uh you know, say motivation or strategy is because where else do you get the opportunity to hear people preach on the same passage, the same theme, and then see different takes on it, and then see how the Holy Spirit brings them to very similar yeah. points because we're reading the same scripture, yeah. but we're not reading the same script, right? I mean, and that's right, but it's what God does through that. And you, you had a, a very emotionally impactful opening yeah. that, that, that. In, in some ways lowered people's defenses, but in a different way. Yeah. And I had a... Could, could you tell in the room as you were in the... I mean, I couldn't tell online, of yeah. course, because I'm just staring at a camera. And you did, yeah, exactly. Uh, but in the room, could you tell in the room that you... that that that, that Could you sense that oh, defenses sure. being lowered? Because everybody... You're talking sure. about Barbie and the yeah. comparison with Bar- Barbie you and hear the gro- coming yeah. together. You hear the groans <laughs> yeah. and you hear the people like... But they, 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 they got where I was coming from. I, I think they were like... Oh wait a minute! So this is how stuff like that works, and this is like in the very and one of the reasons I wanted to talk about the Barbie movie specifically was because people were talking about it that didn't like it. People were talking about yeah, it for didn't whom, even know about it. Huh? They didn't even really know they about it. But they didn't. It. They didn't like the idea of it, and I was like, we won't talk about Jesus because it's we're great. worried it's controversial. We worried people won't like it, but we'll talk about a ton of other stuff that people we know people aren't going to like, and we do it anyway. Yeah. And that's that was my purpose, and that was to kind of like say, look. Be, don't be an incon- if you're going to be anything. Don't be an inconsistent person. Don't say that your faith in Jesus Christ is important to you, but you're not going to talk about. But you you don't want to talk about Jesus because it might offend somebody. When yeah. you're willing to jump into offensive topics all the time, and you do it for the sake of an entertainment moment, right? It was it was to to kind of get to that 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 point, you yeah. know. And I and I that to me is in, those are in the details, right? Those are in the details of how we describe those 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 things and you and i got we got into the luke 24 passage yeah so for those that weren't there uh do again encourage you always to go back to the website watch both messages luke 24 is a very it's it's the pivotal chapter in in the the in luke's gospel um in terms of the resurrection mm-hmm. Lots of things happen in Luke's gospel in Luke 24 leading up to it the road to Emmaus we both mentioned mm-hmm. briefly you spent a little more time in it and then the 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 Jesus appearing the the appearance of Jesus so when you're looking at that lots of details you yeah. talked about the broiled the the broiled fish yeah um where where was your where was your head at in the decision making process there? Well, uh, this is this is where the difference between classic and vine starts to show up yeah. because there's a lot of you have a little more 
room, a little yeah. more space. Yeah, uh, you know, we have we have more more uh, liturgical elements that go into yeah. the classic service that that need to be honored, need to be, yeah. need to be there. Which, which which means that you and I necessarily necessarily reduce the amount of real estate we get yeah. the whole thing, the whole experience is yeah. less time over overall. Um, so some of the detail you s- sort of knowingly leave uh, leave out, which means you got okay. What are the essential pieces? That's the yeah. starting point for me. So what's the what's if I step back and say what is the big picture of this story two guys walking away meet jesus don't realize it's him figure it out it's him he yeah. disappears and then they go back and tell everybody yeah and then there's another moment that, which is the, the text was all in the moment when they're telling everybody he shows up yeah and so um but it's the showing up and and you, i loved how you had the the disbelief turning into joy and amazement you spent yeah. some time uh, on that and you know that that and yeah, I know you did the more storytelling, more yeah. details about your. Uh, I, was, I was fascinated by the way. I was, the, I was with you as the, a young boy yeah. writing a paper on you know Eiffel. Eiffel, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, uh, but it's, but there's that moment in this passage where where they Jesus clearly was addressing their fear and their disbelief, mm-hmm. and then you see the shift taking place. Yeah. And once the shift takes place, that's when it be, the, the real you know, meat. teaching. Yeah. yeah, the real meat comes out. Yeah, yeah. so. So I just need to get through, get to those movements, give, put enough color around those. But part of the, the the broiled fish comment, part of the that moment was they're still uncertain, so uncertain about, and not the, and, and this thing I think is interesting in in Luke's sp- specific because now you and I know, and neither one of us mentioned this, but we know that by the time Luke is writing this, there are debates about the physical resurrection of jesus in right. fact docetism was a yeah, yeah docetism was on the rise already just a ghost, yeah. yeah and there was there was a movement even amongst those who called themselves christians who said yeah, yeah we believe in jesus we believe in the resurrection but we don't believe in the bodily resurrection and paul addresses that um to the corinthian church as well and 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 john's gospel addresses that too so luke's got this like kind of already, and so there, and, and and John does as well too, because John is the only other gospel that mentions Jesus in a meal post resurrection. I think that's right. Is that right? I'm pretty sure that's. I don't think Mark does. I don't think Matthew does. But John does. John on the beach. He's on the beach. Yeah, he's on with, the beach yeah. and he's cooking breakfast yeah. with them. And the assumption is he's eating along with them. Yeah. Um, I, I I I just well, neither one of us decided to go down the road of docetism and or you know the yeah. not, you know the gnostic kind of like uh, uh, um, um, because that wasn't I think both of us kind of sense that's not the that's more detail than was needed that's not the point right yeah. that's not the point of this message it could be the point of another message but not the point of this message right did you think about the 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 heresies that were being that Luke no. was addressing at no. all yeah no but well, it, it's really to, to help understand the reactions and and what Jesus was doing in that moment we, and 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 that broiled fish which was saying that is if they had any questions about whether the physical Jesus was standing before them, him sitting there munching on some fish to answers which, that question. Yeah, takes that down. And and it's weird. I think it's uh, when I'm reading and I'm struggling like to 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 say how much do I say about this because it's almost there are many points in the Gospels. Again, this doesn't come up in the the message, but in there are points in the Gospels where the disciples think they see the ghost of Jesus. I mean, if people the remember walking the, the walking on the yeah, water, yeah. they think it's a spirit. They think it's, and then Jesus has to say, "No, no, no, it's it's me. I'm physically here." And there is this this intentionality by Christ to to and in and, and the Gospels highlighting the intentionality of Christ to say the incarnation is real and the bodily resurrection is real, mm-hmm. and how for us it would be a huge miracle for Jesus to come back in a spirit form or a ghostly form and like be like non, you know, non-bodily non-bodily we would still be like blown away but yeah. for them it was like yeah okay i mean we're scared we're freaked out but like it's much bigger for them to say no no now he's actually physically nail marked hands nail marked feet in our yeah. presence right now this is what john does in with 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 thomas and and you know see my hands see my feet it's all that well, mary, mary in the garden and mary the in the garden you know yeah. Yeah. don't just, don't touch me because i haven't gone back to the yet, father yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah but he knows he, he's going to i just there's well, it, all it, would change, it would change our theology entirely if the, yeah. if the bodily part of it was not emphasized yes because then we'd have to we would have to say something about the body and the spirit separating and not what? not and not having a if for, like to your point, uh, not having the Corinthians correspondence at all with yeah. Paul's emphasis on the bodily resurrection, it would change our theology. 
It would, change the, it would change the early Christological councils yeah. of the church oh. where they were trying to work out the, the how is Jesus and how Jesus and the Father – Father, Son, Holy Spirit, how, how does do they that relate work? to yeah. each other? It, and then what about the dual nature of Jesus, fully, yeah. fully human, fully divine? How does that work? So it would change everything. But neither one of us – I mean, that's the thing that we have to make these – you could preach a sermon about those things. Yeah. And, and we, we have preached sermons about the bodily – the importance of the bodily resurrection. Um, but that this is, this is what I, I think people don't – Think about when we're looking at a passage of scripture. We're we're having all of these things in front of us that could be said. Yeah, we're having to to make a decision prayerfully. Make the decision of what needs to be said, yeah. and what and what is what really is at the heart of the passage that we're looking at. Yeah. What it, it is that whole thing about? You know the 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 dual nature of Christ, the the, the trinitarian nature of the Godhead. Is that the central big idea of the of this passage, or is which is the meat part? Which yeah. is, you know, the 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 upfront part is just calming them down, assuring them that it that he the the guy that was dead is now back alive because they they knew that they knew he, he died. They, they knew he died, and, yeah. and there was this rumor, rumor from the women, and now the the report from the road to Emmaus. So there's something stirring around in, inside of them. So it needed to, to settle that down in order to get to the meat. Yeah. And the yeah. meat is the whole redemption for the forgiveness of sins that needs to be preached yeah. to and the nations the, beginning and, at yep. Jerusalem. And, and as you, your first point is this idea of Christianity has always been a missionary movement. Yeah. It's always been a missionary movement. It's n- at no point has it ever been a consumption uh, uh, right. movement. It's not been a okay come in and consume the yeah. the the spiritual goods and services of the Many church. Many in the history of the Christian church have yeah. tried to make it that mm-hmm. but they do it um of their own making and yeah. not of the not of the, the the divine purpose of the of the church the, pur- the purpose of the church is the outward the Always outward motion and, yeah. and the idea of the transmission of faith like the psalmist say from one generation to another from yeah. one person to another and that's why i love this passage yeah and i love the you know i pulled out the acts one passage with the other another great witness passage mm-hmm. um but it's it's just reminding us that these are marching, how, how yeah. does it happen? Yeah, I, I added something in the live services that I didn't have in the in person services because it's hard to do it in, with live. But I had I had them because I asked them at the end, "Who was it for you?" Yeah, and I said, "Seriously, I'm going to stop right now." I pulled a Fred Rogers one. I, I'm going to stop right now, and I'm going <laughs> to give you ten seconds. I'll watch the clock. You just think of the name of that person. Yeah, yeah. Just think, just think of their name. Yeah, and you mentioned in the the recorded version, you know, a parent or a pastor or a or or a youth director, or Sunday school yeah. teacher. You mentioned some of the categories. Yeah, and and then and then where we really dovetailed was the the knowing your own story, right? Yeah, and this is where you talked about. It. It's I love not, the phrase you used, by the way. I, I wrote that down the, the, to record your record story. Your story, and that's not that's not new. I, I didn't make that up, but but uh, I've heard it and I've preached that before yeah. because but that's, that can be literal. I can. Literally Literally yeah. record it, which which is to write it down, yeah. or I could video videotape it. But really, when I heard it, I don't know how you yeah. how you unpack that, but in, in your mind. But the, what I heard is like to record my own story means to have it logged into my memory banks yeah. in the recording of my in my brain. Yeah. This is what happened to me. This is where I was. This is what happened. This is what what happened since. Well, and this this is cutting room floor. I had another illustration. It's one of those things to say like, why is it so important? Because we talked about witness. You talked about you know in the in the car accident scene you know you were telling what you saw you know it wasn't it was not based on hearsay it was what you saw what you experienced and one of the things i didn't get to say in the message was you know that's why they have a court reporter is so that the witness testimony is recorded so it can go go back and be revisited nice. and we it's so helpful to go back and and i don't know if you've ever done this but well i know you have because we've talked about this before where new members we've encouraged them to write down their story and and or 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 tell it to someone else or and i've taught evangelism classes where i'm like look if you don't if you don't have it in your brain what jesus christ has done for you Start writing it out, and you're going to see the elements that are important. I had a, a professor, um, actually, I've had a couple professors that said, "You got to write your story because you got to know what you need to know what the highs and the lows of your life are that God was working out." And, yeah. and there might be multiple stories of God's involvement, not multiple stories of salvation, but multiple stories where you've seen Christ's involvement in your life. Wow. And the first one is the one 
of your salvation, but you can even go before your salvation and see how God was lining things up to get you to that point. Or you can go after your, the moment of your, uh, your, your salvation, the moment of your acceptance of Christ as your Savior and Lord, and then see how God has worked things out. And you can go back to each one of those and say to anybody who you're witnessing to, this is how I know yeah, God exists, and I know Christ is for me because I've seen Him show up. Well, over and, and over your again. your point of that, um, which I thought was was great to hear it. I think we need to come back to it again and again. No one can argue with that. Yeah, you know, I can think of someone that we both both know who's who's uh, been sort of dabbling with uh, another faith tradition. Mm-hmm. Actually, he's in another faith tradition r- right now, yeah. and would want to argue, you know, all day long about the, you know. Authenticity of the scriptures, reliability of the scriptures, and you know, but can they argue with the with the, yeah. with, the, with your story? Can a family member who's against your your faith tradition yeah. argue against your story? What what are they going to say? Yeah. No, that's not a real experience. So how, you can't judge experiences. Yeah, you can't judge my experience. Right? <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I, I can't. So that's that's uh, it's just really incredibly important. To have. Well, and I loved how you lowered the 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 threshold of becoming a witness by just saying it's. It's not complicated. You know, the, the the ability to witness is not – just saying that to people puts them at ease because yeah. even like – even when I say record your story, the, the, there, there could be someone say, well, it, my story is so complicated, right? Yeah. Or, or the story of the gospel is so complicated, but – Or it, you, didn't you say that, that my story is not, in, not exciting? Not Did, yeah. Did yeah. you bring Which that up? Which you've heard that before, too. Yeah, yeah. I've heard yeah, that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah. Tells, my wife tells us, I don't have a very exciting story. I said, great. Yeah. I don't want you to have to be the person who you know, goes off the deep end. I want my children to have that story where they're yeah. all – you know. That's, 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 that's we, also a miracle. Yeah. Which I did say that. I was like, it's a miracle <laughs> that you live a life where – you faith is is constantly a drumbeat in your heart and your mind yeah. and how that's that's to me that's the poster child right there and it's miraculous <laughs> when people are like yeah, that because yeah. it's 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 less and less and less and because less common especially today. with the, in, the influence of, the, of all that would distract us from living that way yeah. and would take us away from living that way which i did want to bring this up because that brings me to one of the things that you really touched on and and i love this uh the, the idea that we live in this kind of climate where oh yeah we don't we're not even comfortable calling sin sin anymore right and yeah. so many people like you know, we all we have to figure out ways to reformulate even the way we talk about sin because we understand that that, that creates a roadblock to the yeah. gospel not that we eliminate conversations about sin right it's just that we reframe it right. in a way that is also biblically you know uh, faithful but that's it, an important distinction right there, because yeah. some people think it's being soft on sin when you don't call out and come out with a hammer and say, that's a sin, that's a sin, yeah. that's a sin. That's not the point. Yeah. It is a sin. We yeah. believe that it's a sin, yeah. but you can't. You start swinging like that, and nobody's, you, no one's going to listen no to you No one's anymore. listening. Yeah. So yeah. how do you do exactly what you said earlier? How do you lower the defenses, yeah. increase the hearability, try to connect with the, with the person, do it relationally, and lead them to the place where it said, this is how I see this. And I, I think it's critical that we do it. Well, I want to talk about that for just a second, um, just to kind of close this out, because, you know, um, I was interested, I'll tell you how God, you know, talk about how God works things out. As I was listening to your message, two things happened. One, you were telling, so at the very beginning, you're telling the story of the car accident. I'm not kidding. This happened. I, so I'm listening. I usually listen to yours in the you're car. On the, you're on the, on the road. I'm, I'm in the, on the car and I'm not kidding. There had been, there wasn't, there had been an accident right Jeez. in front of me. Like there was a guy and it was terrible. It, it, um, I was with my son and we, we look at this and he's listening to the message too with me. Right. And, uh, because full disclosure, when when you're when you're preaching in classic, you know, there's not a lot of visual. I, I don't usually do that when you're preaching in Vine because there is a lot more visual stuff that yeah, goes movement, on there, yeah. right? Um, but there was a guy who got hit. You know, he he was on a motorcycle. He oh, got hit boy. and he was laying on the ground. Now the, he he was moving and all that. But I'm literally as you're telling that story, I'm watching this. I'm like, I actually paused it because we. Caleb and I said a prayer for for the, the oh, guy nice. that's up traffic. But then right after this, so the very next thing, you know, you, you go through it and then you get to this point where you you quote um a Carl Truman's book, uh the 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 Rise and, uh, Triumph, of the, Rise and Triumph of the Self. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Modern Self. Yeah. Modern Self, which I've read that book actually for my doctoral uh, paper because uh, he talked. I thought he, about you the entire time yeah, I was he, reading that he, book. He, so he, that's he, intense. He does. It was he, a great book. Yeah, he deals with a lot of identity formation. Type. He doesn't use these those terms exactly, but he deals with a lot of the shifting in identity formation. Well, in our it's so culture. helpful to see the the the, the you know five hundred thousand year running start into where we are today. Yeah. That was very helpful. Yeah, and then he then it, he talks about the decline of the conversation uh, r- around sin, uh, especially in the West. Um, and actually, he's borrowing quite a bit from Charles Taylor, um, who called uh, The sec- you know, Secular Age. This is a book that was published yeah. back in, yeah. in 2007. A lot, of, a lot of Dallas Willard in there, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I will tell you, though, Secular Age is not for the faint of heart. It's like 900 pages long, and it's... Whew, <laughs> a lot, but but the same thing. He talks about the shifting from talking about sin as a moral um, a moral uh, offense to the to the transcendent, and moving into a therapeutic disease of the imminent. That's how. That's mm. how. That's how. Uh, that's how um, Charles Taylor frames it. He talks about it from the shift, and and Truman does a similar thing. He talks about it there. But as you were talking about that, I, this is so weird. I was dry, I was still in the car, and I pull up behind this this van, and I'm not. This was so disturbing to me to see this. The guy had because uh, you talked about the story of being at the gas station here in the 17 f bombs, whatever. Yeah. The guy had, a, and it looked like a van that was built for a family. This is what really got me. Like one of those big families got like. 12 12 people in it. Oh, yeah. They had a skeleton uh, fist with flipping the bird, right? And on this, on this like bumper sticker, and oh, then okay. right next to it, I could not believe the 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 <laughs> the two were together. The the, the, temer- no, the temerity oh. of this bumper sticker, which said, "I already know I'm going to hell. I might as well go big or go home." Jolly. I already know. I was like, wow. At what other period of time in history would you ever be like so proud to say, I know yeah. I'm going to hell, that you put it on the back of a bumper yeah. sticker? As if you want to go there. And, and, and I was listening to what you know, you're know you talking about, the, the, the shift in our conversations around sin and how that affects our ability to witness. So, yeah, our cat- I, the categories are not – they're non-categories. So what I'll say – what I want to ask you about is thinking practically here in – and, and we, you mentioned this in your message, but I, just to dig a little bit, people come to you and and say, "I'm dealing with a cousin or an uncle or a fill in the blank hmm. family member, coworker, whatever," and I'm really been praying for them, but they have that I, that attitude that I'm dropping 17 f bombs at the gas station. Don't even think yeah. about it. I've got a. a, a a fist flicking people off and a bumper sticker that says, I know I'm going to hell already going to hell. Like what do you, how do you counsel them to be witnesses in those yeah. relationships? Because more and more, those are the people that we're confronted with more and more. We're not just confronted yeah. with people that are like, yeah, I'm kind of sort of, you know, like their culture. No, I think you're right. I mean, I, and somebody asked me after the, after the, you know, we preach on eight fifteen and ten thirty. Somebody after asked me after the eight fifteen, did I say anything to those boys? Oh yeah. And I said no, I did not. But there have been other situations where something similar was happening, and I did. Yeah. And so it's really so I you know carefully and prayerfully would be my best answer is that you know how, how do you address them carefully and prayerfully you know I, I don't go in on my own strength but yeah. I know one of the times that that I was just dealing with them we had just a couple they were young kids they were having a good time we were at a ball game together but I'm sitting with my 15 year old yeah. And it's just profanity laced left and right. Oh, man. And after five minutes of that, I'll get this sitting right behind me for, for three hours. Oh, my gosh. I turned around and said, I'm not going to – I'm sorry. Listen, I, I'm here with my daughter at a ball game, yeah. and I'd like to not hear the profanity for the next three hours. Can you just dial that back? That was it. Yeah. And I heard, I heard – I turned back around, and we all stared him in the eyes for a few minutes, you know, pulled a dad move on him. <laughs> And then, I, and then I, and I sat back down again, and I heard the little bit of oh, right, kind of the yeah. chatter shitter. And I'm not kidding you, not Zach. Within thirty minutes or so, we are turning around and high fiving and having yeah. a blast. And yeah. they 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 scaled it down there. So yeah. sometimes it's con- it's confrontational. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it's confrontational. Sometimes it's just you know I used to have a friend um, um, who would uh, somebody would say something 
like that bumper sticker yeah. and he, and he would just he was just he's from arkansas he kind of like shucks that's the that's the dumbest thing i've ever heard that's what i wanted to say too and i, I wanted to roll the window <laughs> and he down and just laugh about it he just i just want to roll the window down and like the back of your van is just the dumbest thing i've ever yeah, seen i yeah. mean i just couldn't good luck with that yeah, with a little yeah. sarcasm you're like, good yeah. luck with that that's you know, right uh, you know so so it, you know you have to really be wise in, in your approach and sometimes the the, the approach is I'd love to talk with you about that. Yeah. Help me. That relational side. Help me understand where that comes from. Yeah. You know, sometimes that's on their skin. You know, the, the tattoos yeah, you, on the And this. you've talked about that yeah. before, too. About, Help me understand where that comes from. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's yeah, that's a really, I think, key point. Sometimes you have to be confrontational, right? Sometimes, you you know, but there are other moments. And I think with, with family members and with people that you're in close contact with all, all the time, it's it's leading with, with the prayer, but also leading with the questions. Like, help me understand that. Like, I, I just don't, that's just so far removed from where I'm at. But I'd love, to, I'd love to get to know you better and understand kind of where that's yeah. at. I'm not doing that with the guy that's in a white van or whatever. But you I don't know. know. I heard you offer uh, 17 hours and lunches and uh, uh, all that on, on, on uh, to the crowd on Sunday. So you, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, got lots right. of lunches hey, coming listen, up here, buddy. Listen, I, if people want to know Jesus, I'm, I'm happy to give the rest of my week to that you know if you, if you got Absolutely. questions i'm but it, it, it's it is that relational thing yep. because when, and i think we both kind of were pulling this out in the luke 24 thing these are not strangers jesus knows these these people yeah. jesus has been with these people for three years he's been talking to them for three years he's just confronting their particular doubt at that moment about his physical resurrection the doubts that they have about what's to come you know and the big thing too is commissioning them with what they've seen. It's not just a have this great religious experience and and, and have, a, take, have a good life. You know, yeah, take you this to yourself, which is what a lot of people do with spirituality today. I mean, that's the other big shift in in I think cultural for the folks that are committed to spirituality. They use it from a con- consumption standpoint. They want to have the spiritual experience and get the warm fuzzies for Jesus or for Buddha or for the universe or whatever mm-hmm. it is, and just keep it to themselves because I don't want to offend people. I don't want to, you know, chastise people. Yeah. That's a shift culturally too, I think, because spirituality has become solely individualistic. So the other thing Charles Taylor and yeah. Carl Truman talk about is this idea that that the individualized spirituality has cut the legs out of right. any kind it's of the whole Shushako Endo silence. Oh my God. Jet me- when you talked the- about that, that that I because I've also that book I've also had to to, to read for uh for doctoral studies. Yeah. And uh, uh, man, and I haven't seen the movie. Will, willing to go, yeah, life and limb, yeah. you know, at risk to go to make the gospel yeah. known. Yeah, a brutal, brutal. Yeah, the brutality was brutal. Was, was, I mean, and there's it, actually, it's really Hamas level stuff we saw two weeks ago, but uh, not, but not talked about. I mean, I, I, I never heard that before. Yeah, before that book. I mean, before, and I never the Jesuit priests and and what the you know the Japanese kind of push back against Christianity. I never, yeah. never heard Even that the before. Even ge- the, the priest at the beginning of the mission floating down the That's the, true. the river on the uh, on the cross. You yeah. know, there, there's a lot of the boy. Yeah. There have been some, some very, there have been some Christians who have been. Yeah. I mean, and, and they're still. I mean, look at the Christians in North Korea. That's, yeah. I'm, just, I'm sorry. This is a. This yeah. is, we could go down another path yeah. here. It's just there's no, some really. True. People, the legs have been cut out yeah. from underneath it because there was a day that that was pe- when we, people would step forward in in our boldness. culture, in our in culture. our own culture, yeah, in our own culture, and 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 I think that that's I think we're at that tipping point again. I think there are more and more folks that are like wanting to push back, and I I my hope is that that doesn't that desire for that evangelistic desire doesn't get co opted, right? Because what's happened, I think, is that passion. To is getting co opted for political reasons and ideological reasons, and we're trying to return to some right. I- I- idealized right. version of the United States, which is right. not really the point. The point right. is, no, 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 we want Christ, right? We want yeah. Christ and Him crucified and Him resurrected. That's not, and, and God bless the people who do who work at those levels of, of yeah. being able to make those societal changes like that. That's great, and yeah. we, to some extent, you and I have that yeah. ability to work at those levels as well. But most folks, and certainly all folks, ha- have have um, 
our own story of faith to record and to tell. Yeah. And, and and to your final point, to pray for opportunities, Yeah, you know, wherever that is. And maybe somebody else has their own version of the bumper sticker on the back of the white van yeah. in their lives. It's a car parked in their parking lot, yeah. but belonging to another family or they're in their in their home uh, park, uh, garage. Yeah. And it belongs to their own family member. I think our, our, our whole call out of all of this is to say that the Christian church is here. And it is here because somebody throughout the history of time took that time, took that call seriously yeah. to 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 share and to tell and mm-hmm. with motivation of love and can care for the other person to share and to tell what they know about Christ. Yeah, and just if I you know, I want to just kind of put 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 a kind of a I, I this is one of those weeks where I'm like, if you want to get the full application point of this message, I think you got to listen to both watch because both. I think you got to listen to both, got to watch them both because there's this, we are all missionaries and it's not that complicated. It is yeah. for, for those of us that are missionary, for those that are missionaries in your neighborhood, in your school, in your workplace, don't make it more complicated. Than it has to be prayerfully know your story, build those relationships, ask those questions and 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 just have the boldness to enter into it now this all presumes that you have a deep and abiding faith in jesus if that's not the case then start there start you got to get yourself straight right you you know don't don't preach what you don't i mean well john wesley i I, you know famously was did not become a convert until i think seven years after he was on mission (laughs) yeah yeah we do not recommend that plan and i and 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 full disclosure i was preaching for over a year and a half before my actual so i don't Uh, don't, god can use it god will if god can talk out of a donkey he can definitely (laughs) use uh, that but yeah you you said that you soften that a little bit that's right it's normally said yeah that's right (laughs) I try try not to be one of those 17 times. Yeah, yeah, I'll start counting with you. By the way, just as a a kind of a wrap-up thought for me, I think um, one of the interesting things about both of our messages that really didn't come to me until what you were just saying was that um, sometimes the messages like this feel like pressure. Yeah. I did not feel pressure no. from your message. Or yours. I didn't think that either. And I didn't feel like I was pressuring anybody yeah. to do... It's invitation. To, I, I wasn't pressuring anybody to to go do something that they would not know how to do. Yeah. Um, I was pressuring, I guess, in some sense, to yeah, go, yeah. go tell your story. But yeah. it wasn't like, you know, like, like to go tell your story that you think will be good for another person that's is not, not, that's not pressure. the same thing yeah. as like, I'm going to make you sit down and eat your vegetables kind yeah. of thing. It's not that. It's just, yeah. it's it's a good. Uh, so sometimes these, these these stories get preached, these messages get preached, is like, and almost like I'm going to shame you into yeah. to not doing something. And then not then I'm not going to equip you for doing that. Yeah. I'm just going to shame you for not doing it. And this didn't feel like that at all. I think yeah. we, this is really really more of an organic um, lived. I love how you brought it. If, if the faith isn't there, let's talk about that first. Yeah. If the faith is there, it's there. Yeah. So go talk about it. Yeah. You know? Well, and that's, you know, I, I full circle. That's why you, that's why we use the illustrations that we do. So it's not heavy handed because you can, you can, we can get heavy handed with this yeah. and, and maybe, and there are times when it's okay to be heavy handed. Yeah. There's times when it's okay to be frustrated, but that's why we speak spend the time in the details of those illustrations that's why we spend the time in the details of the story so that we do you know we we make it less thumping you <laughs> with guilt shame yeah. you know as 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 our former associate used to say was not you know trying to shame shower you into shame shower you. into into righteousness <laughs> here but it you know and I, I i do think that there are times where the that that's appropriate but this is this was not one of them for either one of us i, no. I felt like it was an invitation yeah. to be like on some like, this is like a cool thing that we yeah. get the opportunity to do like god that that they god would use yeah. us and our story which is uniquely fashioned for for us so that a certain audience that's not going to listen to Pastor John's story, not going to listen to Pastor Zach's story, not never going to come to church necessarily, because we are proclamational evangelists. I mean, that's what we do more often than we do anything else. We are a relational evangelist. We have those opportunities. But more often than anything else, we are proclamational evangelists. And and we rely on the invitation of other people to come in and hear the gospel or go out in the community yeah. and preach the gospel. But, but for the lay folks... That's their bread and butter, man. Their yeah. bread and butter is relational evangelism, and th- God's put them there for a reason, and yeah. has not put us in those positions for a reason as yeah. well, too. So nice. I, I, you're nice. 100% hey, let right. me just uh, – I just want to close this – I know we're wrapping up, but this series um, – 
that you shaped this series. You put you put yeah. these details together and the scriptures and all to go along yeah. with them. And so to put this here to kind of button up to this one at the end. I mean, the whole thing is about letting faith permeate all yeah. areas of our life, but to have it permeate our witness there, I think it was a good. There was a, a good I, maybe, maybe that's maybe that's why we didn't feel that need to pressure. It's like this is just another iteration yeah. of what it means to be a person of faith. That your faith actually affects all of your life, including this. So, just uh, again, I want to encourage you and just say thank you to you yeah. um, for for putting together. Great series. Last se- last one in the series, but means we're starting a new one this week. We've yeah. got a four week series, five week series, F- five weeks, five, five yeah. weeks. There's, five th- there's five solos, five right? And then four, <laughs> and then five, four after that. Yeah. Five solos. So we're we're talking. We're doing a series called Reformed. Yeah. And you want to set this up at all? So, so people uh, kind of know what. Yeah. Come to church into. and uh, be there. Yeah. Uh, that's that's my setup. So <laughs> <laughs> there's gonna be a little Latin. Yeah. There'll be a little Latin. We try to throw a little Latin out at least once a year. Got to right? make sure people know we're still Presbyterian. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. There's a you know our our movement and our our sort of tribe of of the Christian family um, happened with some pretty distinctive things that, that happened that that we're we're looking at some other things that we that were not being looked at at the time that are still important yeah. like the fact that scripture is our as our first and foremost place where we look for for all matters of life and faith mm-hmm. um, so so that was that which is what we're going to talk about next this week, week so yeah. but those elements um, that that were distinctive to our our tribe are still distinctive to our tribe um, up to including one of my favorite uh, um, Sale Deo Gloria yeah. uh, which is to God alone be the glory which is really fun because at the Bach concert on yeah. uh, on uh, Sunday afternoon you Bach signed all of his you know, his pieces so Sale Deo Gloria yeah. so and I have friends that that's how they sign their emails so, all the you know, time all yeah. the time but uh, that, that we're kicking off that series it's Reformation Sunday yeah yep. uh, October 29th uh Actually, it's always the last Sunday in October. So yeah. Reformation Day is always October thirty first. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just Halloween. Um, yeah. It's the day that that uh, tradition tells us that Martin Luther nailed the ninety five theses on the door of Wittenberg Church, and so yeah. that's why uh, we. You'll see some real real uh, denominational wonks won't say Happy Halloween to you. They'll say uh, Yeah, yeah. Well, Happy we get, Reformation we, Day. Re- the Christians have redeemed a lot of uh, pagan holidays yeah. for. And use them for for good Christian purposes. Yeah. So this is another way. It's our way of doing it's that way, for way, this one. Way, way of doing that. And uh, it's also uh, it's going to be because of Reformation Sunday, Kirkin of the Tartans. Yes. So classic service will be uh, bagpipes and, and banners with tartans on them. People parading down. And You're going to be in a kilt. I'll be kilted up. Uh, <laughs> uh, was it kind of just in ten thirty? Sir, both sir, eight fifteen, ten thirty. I'll be in it, be in a kilt. Uh, but eight thirty is going to be like eight fifteen is going to be like. Where's the bagpipes? So yeah, that's right. You yeah. won't have the bagpipes yeah. at eight fifteen, but yeah. we get the full whole enchilada at the uh, at the at the ten thirty uh, p- pipers yeah. and in and piping out and Amazing Grace and I mean it's yeah it's gonna be good. And I, I'm uh, I'll be in Vine. Uh, we will not have bagpipers, but I, I might wear uh, where's some plaid. I might wear a uh, I might wear my tartan there tie. I have a I have. There two, you go. Two tartan ties, one for my clan, uh, and one because I'm Scottish uh, heritage, and uh, one from I have the actually have the clergy tartan. So I have yes, the, that's the, a nice looking the tartan, blue clergy tartan, which I received as uh, as a gift from another another uh, pastor's widow. So uh, that was just fun. I'll wear one of those, maybe one of those. So it'll be a little special because I don't usually wear a tie. Period. Yeah, and not usually wear a tie and vine. So <laughs> anyway, if you missed uh, this past week's message or any. Message message in this series integrated life make sure you check our website fpclakeland.org go to the worship page and the sermon archive tab you can watch complete services of both classic and our vine modern worship service and be sure you check uh, armchair preaching out on your favorite podcasting platform apple Podcasts, google spotify stitcher soundcloud and uh, be sure to subscribe uh, leave us a review it helps other people discover uh this podcast and uh, the messages that, that that God has given us to preach on a, on a regular basis and uh, share it with your friends. Uh, we think it's a, a helpful part. Like I, we've said many times, unique to our church is the the the, the, 
preaching a strategy of our church is unique, a uh, team preaching. And I will tell you this, there are doctoral studies happening right now uh, out of Fuller Seminary and other seminaries about the value of team preaching. And Good. Because more and more churches are in team preaching environments, different yeah. styles of team preaching, but uh, they're seeing the value of that. And uh, we yeah. could say we, we, we could say we did it first or yeah. we we're one of the, well, we have, one, we have, one of the first. We, I mean, team preaching, a lot of times, is the different people make up the preaching team yeah. and they're on each week. Yeah. Ours is different people make up the team and we have two people on every week. Yeah. So that's, that's which a, is unique. A, that's what makes, a wrinkle. Us, which makes us unique. But anyway. So we expect a call from Fuller Seminary to. Uh, I did get an email from them say, about. I did talk get to a, us about that. I did, I did fill out a survey. This is about it and uh, I, I never heard the results, but it'd be, <laughs> be great. Pastor John, thank you uh, once again for hanging out and uh, we'll be back again uh, next week. See everybody next time.